Hi, this is Sarah Reese from Polk County Public Health here to provide you a COVID update. This is a really exciting time of year and we are working closely with school districts and schools, private and public, across Polk County to ensure that schools are ready to start back in the fall with staff and students. We know this can be a little bit of uncomfortable time because we are all going back to a new environment and none of us have experienced returning to school during a pandemic. So we are exploring lots of new time together. I'm very happy to be partnering with all of Polk County Schools. I and our team here at Polk County Public Health has been working closely with schools to provide consultations, walkthrough, staff presentations, and a little bit of this and that to ensure that they are ready to greet smiling young children as they embark on their educational year. A few things of importance that you should know about is that each school district and school is going to have a COVID coordinator. If you do not know who your school's COVID coordinator is, please contact your school administration to inquire about who you should contact if you have COVID related questions or if you uh, have a student who has COVID related needs and you need to make a report to someone. Also, when we return to school, it's going to be really important that we're mindful of the COVID screener. The screener is simply asking symptom-based questions as well as exposure-based questions to ensure that when we go to school, whether for work or to receive our education, that we are going to school well. We want to ensure that people are showing up and that they're showing up well and use the screener to assess if we need to have additional conversations about if testing or staying home is warranted for that day or the future days ahead. In addition, when we get on the bus or when we enter the school, it's really important to don or to put on a face covering. The face covering, uh, Minnesota has adopted a few different types of face covering as the preferred type of face covering. My most favorite is the cloth face covering that loops around the ears. We perform hand hygiene when we take an, the mask when we put the mask on and when we take it off. It's really important to wear the mask or some type of barrier over our nose and over our mouth because we do crowd control with our germs. So we keep our germs closer to us and further away from uh, people around us. We need to treat our masks like underwear. So each day when we're getting ready for our day, we get socks on, brush our teeth, and we grab our mask. Throughout the day, uh, it's great to grab a new mask if the current mask that we're wearing is soiled or might feel moist. Next, we have face shields. Face shields are also an accommodation if for some reason masks are difficult to wear. Each school district should be having a masking policy and you can ask to look at that masking policy to know what the expectations are of you as a staff or as a student in the school district so that we're all having a clear expectation of what's to be expected. The face shields are an accommodation for when the mask uh, doesn't work because it impedes an educational process or there's a health reason to warrant the face shields. The next layer that we're building into our strategies to prevent the spread of COVID is social distancing. And social distancing, as we've talked about before, is keeping ourselves six feet away from others. In our back to school plans, uh, because of the way that the different models work, uh, what we're trying to do is keep as much distance as we can. Sometimes we can't keep exactly six feet, but then we want to encourage as much distance around us. The reason for that is because droplets go out of our mouth and go out towards other people. If we wear the mask, we're keeping it closer to home, yet there's still that ability uh, for uh, times when masks are on and off and for reasons for which uh, the focus on social distancing is really important. So if you can remind children around you to try and keep your distance from other people, that is the best news we can share with them right now. Also, your school districts have been working closely with their buildings and maintenance folks to make sure that their HVAC systems are prepared. We're trying to increase the amount of airflow, opening windows, taking lessons outside when we can, uh, and also increasing our amount of cleaning and disinfecting in our classrooms, high touch areas, and throughout the, the day. And last but not least, we are working closely together to have rapid response. So we wanna make sure that people's protected health information stays that way 
and we also want to make sure that people that have a need to know who might be a close contact who may have been exposed to someone get the information and education that they need as well so the school district and the Polk County Public Health are working together to quickly mitigate any concerns brought to our attention. We appreciate the group effort that is happening and most certainly we're excited to see students in schools this coming week. Thank you and have a great Labor Day weekend.